Hi guys, my name is Kunal. In the previous video, we discussed about the two important modules of the SAP system, that is the functional module and the technical module. Also, we discussed about the different projects on which we're going to be working after the completion of the SAP consultancy training. In today's lecture, we're going to have a look into the enterprise structure, that is the theoretical part. However, we're going to be learning about the practical part that is the working on the SAP system in the next video. Now, why theoretical part is very much important in the SAP? So, I want to let you know guys that in SAP, we have to maintain codes. There is nothing as theoretical in SAP. Everything is based in the form of the codes. So, before working into the SAP system, we need to maintain a blueprint of that work so that if we forget certain codes, our blueprint would be beneficial to us to regain that codes so that we're going to be able to input it into the SAP system. So, now coming on into the enterprise structure. What is enterprise structure? So, let us understand with the example. For example, we have a bill on which there is a name of an organization, its branch, the item purchase in numbers and the numerical amount. So it's not very much possible for us to input such a thing directly into an SAP system. So for that, we have to first create a company that is here, this is the company and it's a main company for example under a particular company there are various other companies for example as seen in the example i have taken mahindra Group private limited so under mahindra groups there are two companies like mahindra finance mahindra logistic and there might be several other companies too so first we have to make the main company and then we have to come into the other companies which is under under it so I have taken Mahindra Group Private Limited and I have mentioned the code. As I told you earlier that in SAP system, everything is maintained in the form of the code. So for each thing we're going to be recording, we need to maintain a code. So I have taken a code MGPL which represents Mahindra Group Private Limited. Now Mahindra Groups have two companies. That is Mahindra Finance Private Limited and Mahindra Logistic Private Limited. And these two companies are known as the company code. I want to tell you guys that the company code is the legal entity. It is the entity which has to be registered in their respective states. So for Mahindra Finance Private Limited, I have taken MFL as the company code. And for Mahindra Logistic Private Limited, I have taken MLL as a company code. Now, Mahindra Finance Private Limited has two branches that is in Mumbai and Delhi and this is known as the business area. So, for the Mumbai branch, I have taken the code as MFLM and for Delhi, I have taken MFLD. So, guys, you can take any code but the main thing is you need to remember it and for remembering it, I would suggest you to maintain a blueprint that is recorded in Excel and side by side repair it once you are working upon it. So similarly, for Mahindra Logistic Private Limited, they have their branches in Mumbai and Gujarat and the code for which I have assigned to both the branches is the MLLM and MLG. Now comes the credit control area. So what is credit control area? Simply credit control area means setting a numerical limit. That is, if certain numerical go beyond such certain numerical limit, then it will put an error onto the SAP system and it won't allow us to record that transaction. So, in tally, there are two parties that is the daters and the creators. Daters are the one from whom we have to take the money and the creators are the one to whom we have to pay the money. Similarly, in the SAP system, there are two parties. That is the vendor and the customer. Customer is the person to whom we have to pay. Uh, sorry, customer is the person from whom we have to take the money, and vendor is the person from 
to whom we have to pay the money yeah so i got a bit confused but yes so vendor is the one to whom we have to pay the money and customer is the one from whom we have to take the money so in the credit control area for example i put a limit of 10 crores that is in a particular year we won't be doing a transaction of more than 10 crores from a particular vendor so if i purchase certain things for a cost of more than 10 crores from a particular vendor in a particular financial year so i won't be able to record it into the sap system because it will throw an error as i have set the limit so that's called a credit control area now coming on to the cost center and the profit center so profit center generally means an income and cost center generally means an expense for the respective branches of a company code so profit center and the cost center majorly comes into the controlling part which we going to be looking into the later part after finishing of the fi section so in fi section company company code business area and credit control area are the four major areas which we have to work upon before starting to record the actual transaction so we going to be looking into the practical part into the next video till then yeah that's all if you like my content please like share and subscribe to my channel and yes thank you and have a good day